Hey everybody, welcome to Never Stop Building. I'm Jason, and today we're gonna to be talking about this super surfacer. This is a Maranaka GT slider. I made a whole video of going over to North Carolina to pick it up, but now we're finally gonna dig into this machine, see all the goodies that came with it, and make some sweet shavings. So let's get to it. All right, so I leveled the machine out, and now before we get into it, let's put these outrigger pieces on. And we're gonna start with these uh, adjustable guides that go on each end. All right, the support roller mounts are on, and then these rails basically just slide on 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 square nuts and that these these two rails can let you constrain the board so that it goes through the right goes through the direction you want it to every time all these tools it came with. All right, so what is this machine? What does it do and why, why do I have it? So this is called a super surfacer. Hitachi makes them, Maranaka makes them, a couple other companies. Basically, imagine a Japanese hand plane or even a Western hand plane, turn it over, attach a large drive belt on top of this thing here and shoot a board over top of the blade. So instead of hand planing a thousand boards, you shoot them through here and shavings fall out the bottom here. You still should learn how to hand plane because you can't do very wide panels, but if you have a whole timber frame to, to finish up or you have a bunch of Kumiko or small parts for doors, this can be a big time saver. This machine has some history. It's kind of a, a legendary item. So it was uh, imported to the United States to be used on the Larry Ellison Japanese compound. A lot of the people that taught me, I guess whenever this was built 20 years ago or something, that was like the big job. Every Japanese carpenter in the United States was sort of put on this job because it was you know, a multi-million dollar house. They brought this machine in, did all the planing for the, that compound, and then sold it to a company in California, which sold it to my buddy Tom out in North Carolina, and then he sold it to me. So I, I guess I'm a caretaker of this for a while. The previous machines like this I used to have had a single blade on, on the top of the moving carriage that you could adjust the angle of the blade uh, relative to the direction of feed. This one has a fixed angle, but it has two blade carriers, one with the blade pointing this direction and one with the blade pointing this direction. And it has an auto reverse feature. You send the board through 
uh, sensor detects when the board is all the way through, it moves this blade into place and then it feeds it back. So it can take a forward and, and back shaving on, on one side of, of the wood, which can help uh, get a better surface finish. You also have the advantage of if this blade starts to get dull and you're feeding only in the forward direction, you can put the reverse blade in and then feed it in the other direction so you don't have to sharpen the blades or change them. Also, everything is pretty much automated, power feed up and down, blade feed, and it has a sensor that detects when the board is at the correct height to feed, and then this little lamp lights up. So you set the board in, you bring it down until this lights up, and then it's at the correct height to send through. And then there's a knob here to adjust the cushion, is what they call it in the manual, which is, uh, I guess, how much pressure it's gonna put on the board. Here's a control panel. There's not a whole lot to adjust. This tells you if you have power input. This turns the power on, which then lights up. This tells you your feed direction. Auto return will do that thing where it stops the board and brings it back. This will only feed it in, one, in this direction. This will only feed it in the opposite direction. Uh, start, e-stop, and then this is, a, this is a delay timer it determines how long before it switches the board to the other direction, it'll wait. So the manual doesn't give a ton of information on why that's necessary and why you would want less time or more time. Maybe it's just so that you're ready to catch the board when it comes back at you. Actually jumping in right here. So what, what this does, it's a delay from the time the sensor detects the board has passed the blade till when it engages the reverse feed mechanism. So what that effectively determines is a distance. It's not waiting for the board to be done. It's continuing to feed and then it reverses. So yeah, if you set it too long, it'll blast the board out the other side. And if it's too short, it'll reverse it before it's finished the cut. So that's what, well, that's what that timer thing does. So it's right now it's basically instant. So let's well, put it on half second. So I don't know when the last time this machine was calibrated. I mean, it makes a shaving, but it's not like a glorious shaving. You can feel the blade here, but it feels like a little uneven. So we're gonna pull these knife blocks and put in a fresh set of blades and get this machine calibrated to work. They're right there. Yeah, here's the carriage. This just free floats here, and then it, it engages with a gear back there. All right, here's the mounting area for this blade. So it has these bolts hold the blade to the backer blade, like the chip breaker. And then these spring-loaded bolts hold the blade pack to the carriage. And then these little guys, which you can access from the top, adjust the camber of the blade so that it's in line. Then you have two screws here, which adjust the the nose is what they call in the manual, which imagine the mouth of your kana can adjust close to the blade. So we talk about trying to have a really tight mouth on a kana because this, pressure, this applies pressure to the fibers of the wood just before it cuts. So you can adjust how tight that mouth is to the blade. So this is a little big in my opinion. So we're gonna put the blades in, we're gonna get this all tuned up and make some shavings. All right, this is a pretty cool feature, which I think I understand. They call it the EG knife system. Basically, you turn this screw, you can see 
this notch is moving relative to this other notch. What this piece is, is it's a wedge that's thicker on one side and thinner on the other side. Imagine the wedge on this, this side of the blade. As you increase the pressure, it's gonna put pressure on the back of the blade, which will tilt the blade this way. And if you release pressure, the springs on those screws will force the blade back and tilt it this way. And we're talking very minute amounts of adjustment here. And by effectively tilting this blade, you're changing the angle slightly at the edge, which changes the amount of protrusion is what it says. It doesn't move it up and down like this. That's what I originally thought. That's what these camber screws will sort of do. This, this basically lets you fine tune that shaving within a very small margin by exposing more of the blade to the wood. All right, this is gonna be impossible to see on the camera. On this side we have the blade, and on this side we have the chip breaker, or the backer knife is what they call it. The blade protrudes slightly past, imperceptibly past the chip breaker. Uh, it says for softwoods in the manual, 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters. So that's gonna be important when I'm resetting this is to get that just so on both sides evenly. And I'm not gonna change the chip breaker. That you can also grind in, I'm gonna clean it. I did get an extra set of chip breakers, but this, so from what I can tell on in initial inspection, this looks pretty clean and I don't want to wear out another set if I have this set. All right, brief interlude here on sharpening the blades for the super surfacer. So this is a package deal. I got the machine itself and I got this Auto Lapper 500 grinding unit. This is a blade grinder. So we have one rough grinding wheel that spins and hollow grinds the blade and then a uh, honing cup that hones the blade. And this moves automatically back and forth to take passes on the blade. So I'm not gonna go in depth a ton on this machine. It's a cool machine. I'm gonna make a whole other video about it when I'm ready to sharpen one of these blades. I wanna start playing with it, but I gotta think through a couple things, namely what kind of grinding fluid, a water soluble oil I should be using for this, if it's possible to get that in with some sort of antifreeze in it because it gets pretty cold in the shop. So I don't wanna fill the reservoir with water and then have it freeze and crack something. And I have these sharp blades. So I have no immediate reason, as much as I'd like to play with this machine, I'm gonna save that until I figure out all those little details. If anybody has experience with grinding fluids, uh, please put a recommendation in the comments or something. So let's uh, hold off on this. I'm sure it's exciting. Uh, we'll make a whole other video about that in the future. But for now, let's get back on the blade carriages and put some new blades in. Whoa. Wow, that's sharp. Yeah, this feels noticeably duller. Like the other one, I'm like barely even grazing my thumb. Whereas this one, it just catches those skin cells. Oh my God, the, the sharpness is incredible. Oh but boy, this is gonna be amazing. So this one has to go, this one has to go for grinding. So we'll, we'll save that for later. There's a half millimeter and just shy.
you really don't want to tighten this too much, there's a curve in the blade. You basically want, you don't want to smush this and open up that opening there. So just hand tight. All right, we got one blade set done. I'll do the other one off camera and come back. All right, let's give this the uh, Never Stop Building Naval Jelly Treatment. Because this is what you use in the Navy to get your rust off. All right, we'll come back in 10 minutes and uh, clean it up. While I'm waiting for the navel jelly to work its magic, I'm gonna give this whole table a healthy oil sanding at 400 grit, and then uh, give, it my, give it my Bostic coating treatment to make it super slippery. Basically, it's like a fancy wax. I want this to be effortless. Oh, that is smooth as silk. I'm gonna reset the EG adjuster so that it's centered right there. I'm gonna back these screws off so that I don't accidentally jam the blade into the into the nose. All right, the blade is seated. Put these spring-loaded blade retention bolts in. I'm just gonna hand tight that. So now I can use these screws just by hand to adjust the blade coming out. So for starters, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the heavy lifting first. All that I'm doing is I'm just feeling, just like you would a, a manual plane or a hand plane, just feeling for that blade to protrude just ever so slightly above the surface here. Now that I've roughed it in, I'm gonna tighten down these retention bolts. All this stuff is very not to be reefed on. It's amazing how, this is exactly what happens in a hand plane. Slight deformations in the wood and the dye, slight changes in humidity, everything affects the shaving. So tightening these bolts an unequal amount may deform the blade slightly. All right, so now, that I have the blade in, we want to adjust the nose, which this one looks pretty good. The other one needed quite a bit of work. I'm gonna put, put this a teeny bit closer. So there's bolts here that loosen the, this whole piece of metal. And then there's two bolts here that move it back and forth. I'm gonna loosen them from underneath off the table here because I don't want I don't want this to get loose. These are not threaded in here. These are just pushing. I don't want these to get loose and uh, drop the nose into the blade. All right, now it's just a matter of adjusting these two screws. Oh, it's so imperceptible. Just to tighten that mouth up. You know, I love the hand plane, but there's something to be said about these mechanical devices. It makes the adjustment way easier than just hitting everything with a hammer. Now this is what's pretty cool. When those bolts are loosened, this 
blade protrusion is less than it was before I loosened them. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So as I tighten down those bolts uniformly, it's gonna pull this nose bar back down. So that's, that's the tolerances we're dealing with here. And I don't wanna over tighten any one bolt because I don't want this to warp and change the thickness of the shaving at any one point. See now, now it is protruding. It's pretty amazing, just that little bit. And now for final adjustment, even with those bolts tightened down, those springs allow me to adjust the blade. The human finger is amazingly sensitive to, it's like, very, like thousandths of an inch or less. This, this end is out more. So I'm gonna give this just the tiniest twist. Yeah, now we got protrusion evenly. Now I cannot, for the life of me, figure out what this screw is supposed to do because when I adjust it, I mean maybe we must be talking three hundredths of a millimeter for a whole turn of this screw. So we must be dealing with very fine adjustments here. But that's something I think we'd be better to see on the machine itself. That was fun, it was cool kind of getting my hands dirty and cut. Oh boy, that's sharp, holy You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful on um, getting these set up. Now I really have an understanding of how all these parts move and adjust the blade. These are cleaned up, lubricated, set just nicely. So let's put them back on the machine and see if it works. That's in there. Has it ever been serviced? I got the machine all lubed up and ready to go. But before I start running boards through it, when I run my hand across this belt, it feels a little rough in the center and a little, sh a little slippery on the sides. And these belts tend to, they're a soft rubber, but they tend to kind of get harder over time. And what the manual recommends and what I've done before in the, my other machines is I'm just gonna take a sanding block and, sm and get a little bit of roughness on this belt and then I'll take a paper towel and use this rubber renew. This is sort of for printing press stuff and it kind of softens the rubber and cleans out gunk and stuff. So we'll get the belt all cleaned up and then I think we're probably ready to start making shavings on this thing. I'm gonna start this at two, which is what the manual recommends. That's how tight the belt is. See there, there it's ready to go. That is amazing. Look at the look at the size of this. Look at that. It's smooth as silk here. Let's do another one. We could probably thin this down. We could probably make this a little thinner. So now I'm gonna put it on the auto return mode. It's gonna go through, it's gonna pause, and it's gonna come back with cutting with both blades. Oh. So what it's doing there is it takes two roughing passes and then it takes a finishing pass.
Oh yeah, see this is much thinner. That, that made a much thinner shaving. You can, you can see through it here. That is a beautiful, that's beautiful. That is amazing. See, here's the, it's called chatoyance or something. Yeah, you can see the, it's just glossy, it's beautiful. Did a really good job. Look at all these shavings. Oh, oh my gosh, I wish you guys were here to smell this. This is so, oh, this is gonna be really fun to do this project. Oh, everything smells amazing. I am, um, I'm super impressed. This is a nice thin shaving. You can see your, you can see right through it. I'm sure as we do lots and lots of material, we'll really get a feel for the tweaks we can make to get a nice consistent thin shaving. And then once we get that sharpener up and running, we're off to the races and we can experiment a lot. So it was really good to kind of mess around with this machine and, and figure out all, it, all you know, how it works. So like in a production setting, it's gonna send the piece through once, bring it back twice, flip the blade, and then come back to you. That way this, this is sort of your finished blade and this is your roughing blade. And I guess it says in the manual that if you have particularly ornery wood that only likes to be planed in one direction, you can flip the knife block and feed twice in the reverse direction or you can set it up to be either forward or reverse mode and feed in the direction that is best for the wood. So for example, I'm thinking mm, if I was doing a bunch of small pieces that were in pretty good shape, I probably would set up a work station where you know, I had a buddy receiving on that end and we sent him through, boom, 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 because the forward, forward, back, reverse, situation, it's a little slow. I can see on large pieces it makes sense, but if you have lots of things to do, maybe it's faster to just send them all through. This is impressive. So I hope you enjoyed this video about the Super Surfacer Maranaka GT slider. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments down there. And when I do the video on the grinding machine, I'll try to answer all that. Um, so thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.